Hello everybody. Hi guys. My name is Reggie. My name is Giacomo. And in this video, we are going to talk about pH levels, alkalines, acids, emollients. The reason we're going to make this video is because in the last six months, I have been traveling around the world and every time I use the word alkaline, the detailers go like this. It scares them. So we need to clarify what this actually is. And we're going to divide it into another category. And Giacomo is going to explain us exactly. everything about caustic, corrosive. And I'm going to let the rest because I'm just a detailer. Leave up to Giacomo right here. Guys, if you want to follow me, I think the most important question to ask, because we hear this word pH, and we hear pH 11, we hear alkaline, we hear acid, but what does it actually mean? Giacomo, tell me once and for all, what is pH? pH is a scale used to measure how acid or alkaline water solution is. Pure water has a pH value of seven, exactly in the middle of the scale. Below from seven to one, we identify acid solutions, while above from seven to 14, we identify alkaline solutions. A very huge misconception though is thinking that pH scale is a linear scale, while in reality it is a logarithmic scale. That means it only takes few drops of acid or alkaline chemicals to move pH to the extremes of the scale. We have alkaline and acid. So we have sodium hydroxide. It's a very powerful alkaline chemical. And we have hydrochloric acids. It's uh, a powerful acid. And in those two chemicals are contained what are called ions. And ions determine the pH value. No matter of fact, if I just pure neutral, it's neutral. So if we just have a water solution, it's just water, common water. The pH it's about 6.6, .6, roughly seven. So it can be considered neutral, right, Reggie? Yes, sir. Okay. Then I put a very, if you can see the droplets. Oh, you see that's less tiny, than... Tiny, 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 tiny droplet. There. Whoa. And you see the pH spikes up. <laughs> there was one drop. <laughs> it rose almost two, two levels from 6.65 to 8.48 with one drop. Now, so far, this only tells us that the pH level is going up. My point, Reggie, is uh, if we, we measure pH of the pure solution, the sodium hydroxide here. The 100% solution. Exactly. This is what we need to focus on. Not the alkalinity, not the acid level, because lemon, lemon juice is also acid. Exactly. And everybody drinks lemon juice. And that's not dangerous, nobody's so, dying. If you see the pure sodium hydroxide has a pH of almost 13, okay? So if I put back my electrode in solution, we can see the pH of the water solution containing what about 10, 15 drops of pure sodium hydroxide has even a higher level of pH. Incredible. That is caused by ionic mobility, which is another parameter we, we take in consideration. But just to show that in a concentrate product, uh, the pH can be even lower than the product due to this thing called uh, ionic mobility. Clarified. So in this case, the water solution with 10, 15 drops of sodium hydroxide has a pH higher than pure sodium hydroxide. Wow. Okay. Impressive. So, here we have an aluminum panel on which we're going to do our corrosion tests, okay? So, Reggie, uh, what do you expect uh, if we pour some drops of sodium hydroxide and our water solution? What's the result? Well, both of them were the same pH, so I would expect the same, same result. Okay, let's see. This is pure sodium hydroxide, caustic soda. 
Now we take our water solution of caustic soda. What happens? Huh. That's uh I think that's a day and night difference. Yes. Sodium hydroxide is corroding the aluminium panel while our water solution is not, even though they have the same. Yes, yes indeed. That's one of the many proofs that you can have that pH level is not alone enough to say if a substance or solution is capable to corrode aluminium or not, which is the most delicate surface you can find in our own cars. True. We're going to measure pH of primus use the washed electrode here in the solution. The pH is roughly 11.3. Okay, so we run the same aluminum panel test, corrosion test. against caustic soda on the other side. <laughs> you see? You see? And you heard. You can hear it. It's like cooking an egg. Um, so, what do you see, Reggie? Like a completely unaffected piece of aluminum against something that is, is it going to light on fire or? Exactly. And you can spot another thing. If you see the difference in the dimensions. Yes. That's what the monitor effects of primus can be seen directly on the surface. That means the uh, very high molin power just spreads the detergents all over the surface. Wow. That meaning of being a, a pre-wash. You just need to enter the dirt and detach the dirt from the surface. That's why you see primus breaks the superficial tension of the aluminum panel while other kind of uh, liquids are not capable to do such a thing. Wow. So it's not just a detergent, it's just uh, it's also an aid to spread evenly homogeneously over the exactly. surface. This is the, uh, the penetrating power you can see with your own eyes. Also, oh my god, you can hear it, man. You can hear, you can hear, I can hear sizzling. <laughs> okay, it's time for ductile. For English people, ductile. For Dutch people, ductile. Same, aluminum panel pass. Again, the spreading. Is it then called a reduction of surface tension? Exactly. Wow. I learned something today. Look here, the, the small circle, how it penetrates and it moves, keeps, moves, moves and keeps going. Keeps moving. So it's not just a cleaning detergent, it's also 
something that can divide see, evenly see. over this whole money. Nice, very nice. To be honest, this is the first time that I looked at it like this. I did not know the technology was in there to create, reduce the surface tension, to get a more homogenic solution over the surface. It's fantastic. So glad we did this. See, it's almost half the circumference of the aluminum disc. Just into a couple of drops. No aluminum burning, no damage. Still a clear liquid and a very shiny piece of aluminum. No sizzling, by the way, no sizzling. Same thing with Purifica. Now, Reggie, we must change instrument. We leave this pH meter into pure Purifica, while we must use this other pH meter with the plastic probe, not glass, to measure pH value of this concentrated hydrochloric acid solution. pH value is about 1.20. We do again the same test. Panel. Okay. Drop, 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 drop. Drop it like it's hot. When the pimp's in the crib, ma. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Whoa. Holy sh there's smoke coming off. Okay, this is hardcore. <laughs> I'm, I'm stepping a little bit out of the picture. Now, if now, if not, I can hear the sizzling from over here, so you have to hear the sizzling as well. And you see, this one is completely burned with only one step of pH difference, okay? This is what happens on your car when you use high concentrated acids. This is what happens when you use Purifica, almost the pH is quite similar, but the results are pretty different. To conclude this video, we have proven today that a pH level is just a measurement scale. What we've proven today is that you have caustic and corrosive, and that we have created products with a low pH and a high pH, alkaline and acid, like Primus completely safe for delicate surfaces. Ductile, completely safe for delicate surfaces. And Purifica, completely safe for delicate surfaces. Feel free to share this video amongst all detailers around the world because this information is key. So you know what you are doing and you have the backing of the greatest detailing brand in the world. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Don't forget to share a thumbs up and if you need any more questions, tips, write it below. Ciao. Bye.